Okay. Here we go with the other types of um, instructional techniques. Individualized instruction is sort of like what we I talked about before, where you lay out all of your program and student kind of works on their own uh, assignments and you give individualized instruction to each student uh, periodically uh, whenever they need it and um, everybody is is on the very very different uh, levels different spots within the curriculum and so difficult to, for you to uh, sometimes keep track of uh, who is where but I would almost say that uh, chances are online learning is uh, very very similar to individualized instruction discussion method variations there's just a whole wide uh, range of uh, ways that you can uh, run a discussion your book covers a few um, one that I've done before is the buzz session where you start talking about a, a topic and you just try to get everybody involved uh, to a, a great degree and that you find it come up with some kind of outcome you may not have one going in but at least everybody can agree on uh, a decision made during that buzz session programmed instruction way back in the 70s some behavioralists put together some curriculums where you would give some answers and get immediate feedback uh, to that back when I was in eighth grade we had some SRA reading material that uh, was nothing more than a bunch of flashcards with questions on them. We'd, we'd read the little essay, have to answer questions, pull an answer sheet, grade them, and the teacher would kind of monitor our progre progress uh, as we would go through this thing. And so some people uh, are kind of getting back to that, especially with uh, online learning, where you you run through a structured set of uh, lessons, and you are given immediate feedback on what you've what you've learned. And finally, cooperative learning been been around quite a while, where you will put a student in a job-related situation where they can get some instruction on your end and then go and work and kind of get those uh, things that you're teaching them reinforced there on the job and it's been around in uh, our secondary schools as cooperative ed for quite a while and we're seeing that I guess our clinical phases for a lot of the uh, uh, health occupations programs could maybe uh, be um, categorized in that, but yet there are some uh, trades that have some cooperative learning uh, courses where if they can work out the uh, agreements, a uh, student can spend some time there with a business getting uh, an on-the-job type of training. So it's a very good uh, program from what I've, I've seen of it. Some more instructional techniques, teaching by demonstration. Oops, I didn't. Say, there we go. Questions and instruction. Um, certainly, you want to kind of get some feedback from students as to how they're grasping the uh, information that you're presenting to them. And the overhead question is pretty much where you throw out a question to the whole group of students. Uh, you kind of look over their heads to the back of the room and just shout out the question. 
and you just look and see who's going to answer it. The direct question is where you pick out a student, say James or or Mary. What do you think about this? Rhetorical questions and uh, reverse questions. Um, I've never used to uh, a great extent. I've always found that the direct question works best. Your technique is to ask a question, pause, call on somebody, listen to what their answer is, and then try to uh, emphasize uh, the answer. Questioning kind of helps keep your students uh, sharp. You know, if they don't uh, study their uh, their homework, they don't uh, do their assignments. Whenever you go out there to question them, they don't want to uh, look bad in front of everybody. And so you can kind of keep them sharp and keep them uh, focused by asking questions because you know, who who wants to say that I don't know this and obviously there that there, there may be some some questions that you might throw out that they don't know the answer to maybe you didn't cover it so you be very careful whenever you question not to make students feel like you're picking on them or uh, you've got it in for them if you're really trying to find out exactly what they know then then question and the final slide talks about some instructional aids chalkboard or whiteboard if I didn't have my chalkboard or whiteboard I don't know what I'd do uh, I, I love to, to get up there and do work up there in front of everyone mock-ups there are some programs like our auto mechanics a department that have mock-ups uh, of engines. Some of them are cut out, some of them are are not, and you can tear the thing down to see how the parts fit. Charts. Um, I remember using some flip charts from time to time. Uh, those have become more, uh, much more rarer with all the PowerPoints uh, stuff that we have out there. Film strips and slides, uh, almost obsolete with the uh, flash, uh, macromedia flash stuff that's out there um, from some of the publishers. Transparencies, uh, they're getting rarer and rarer. I've got a bunch of transparencies that I've got stored up and pretty much all they're doing is uh, collecting dust as well as my overhead projector. I don't use that at all anymore. Do use videos and films. Uh, there's right now I've been doing these videos on on YouTube. Take a look at YouTube. I know there's some stuff there that's that's not good, but there's also a lot of great stuff in the way of, of educational material that you just have to kind of sift through and look that are out there. Uh, for us to use. Uh, teacher Tube is another uh, resource that you could possibly use and certainly your uh, publishers may have uh, videos for uh, a number of, of topics. Films. When I taught drafting I subscribed to a film library and they would send me a film every every week. All I had to do was to pay the uh, shipping back to the uh, company and I found a lot of good stuff out there uh, that dealt with engineering and uh, maybe working with the soft skills that uh, were basically free uh, all I had to do is pay about a dollar or so for postage of course it was a 16 millimeter film which is obsolete now I don't know any t um, classroom that doesn't have a computer in it now they have just revolutionized the way you and I do things. Audio and visual recorders. Um, maybe you've got a video camera in your classroom. Maybe you have uh, 
uh, some tape players that you can record them sh some things. Uh, most of our people are, are are visual learners, and so anything you and I can show that of a visual nature to them is going to definitely uh, work to our advantage. And finally, printed instructional age. There may be some handouts that you've developed and also have uh, students using uh, from time to time within the course. Uh, use them. They're, they're great uh, tools for them to be able to mark up and uh, study from, especially for tests. So I think that will wrap us up for chapter six and I'm going to go ahead and start on the lessons for uh, chapter seven. Hopefully have them up real quick so we can keep moving forward.